You're listening to the Now What Podcast with Joe Fernandez and Mike Gaffney. Please enjoy the show. Hey guys, welcome to... What is it again? What really? now, right? Really? You came up with the goddamn name. <laughs> I can't ever remember. Is it what now? But now, no, now, no, now what? It's not now what. what? You, uh, you came up with it. Welcome to now what? I don't, re- I, I don't know why that's. It's so easy to tr- do both, isn't it? Can, can it be the same? I'm not saying that it's. Can it mean the same though? What now? Now what? Right, but we named it now what? We made the picture and everything. No, I, so the show's now <laughs> what? Has to be. Has it's to be that, right? Because that's the only way they're gonna find us. Because how? Yeah. They, like what now is not? Gonna, they're gonna find that. No. We are now the what? we're the now what podcast. We're recording in a in a Winston Salem, North Carolina, the home of Baby Mike Gaffney. That's right. Oh, whoa, he almost fell off his chair. Like I did when I was a baby. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was born in Mount Airy, North Carolina, so we're about forty miles away from where I was born. And just took a little ru- stroll down memory lane. Yep, Mike grew up in Andy Griffith town. That's right. You've been doing that enough. <laughs> He's been whistling the goddamn tune for about two hours now. How is not everybody when you're walking up the Mayberry Street would not whistle that tune? That's the only thing that we got going for us for now. In 50 years from now, bump that goddamn statue of Andy Griffith out, put it in Mike Gaffney's statue. Mike Gaffney's era. Yeah, exactly. He, was, he lived here for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> but he used to come down every summer and stay there. And <laughs> he got in trouble there, got drunk and got lost in the woods over there. Yeah. It's not. It's a nice uh, state if you you know like your southern it's nothingness. No, I like. I, I mean, I like because it's you know it brings me back. It's like I like coming down here because I just remember being a kid. I was down here a lot. I spent all summers here. Yeah, this is where I came every summer until I was nineteen years old. And then so, what happened? And then I became an adult that didn't want to go here. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're like in your t- well and then drugs but other than that i mean crack doesn't really permit you a lot of vacationing because yeah. they uh, believe it or not they're not big known for the crack down here no so when i i remember coming I down, it was biscuits gravy and crack right was, negative there's no no. Cr- no crack i was like 20 i think i was like 21 tw- i was smoking crack we were down here for some probably a funeral but anyhow, i was down and, here wait wait before they may not be known for crack but i guarantee you that homeless white girl dreadlocks playing the accordion on the corner by our hotel she probably knows what a crack is probably well here's the story since okay. I, I it was i was i came i was here i was a crackhead i said to my cousin i want some crack and my brother i think my brother or somebody took me they didn't have crack they had crank which is speed Mm-hmm. They didn't have crack. Nobody in the hood even knew what I was meant. Now, I'm not saying that was you know 21 years ago. They it kind of might have you know made its way through here, but it wasn't here in 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 90 and 91, 92. It was not here. Yeah, I couldn't find it. But I had to do crank instead. You poor guy. I know. Settling. <laughs> what do you got to do? You got to adjust. So how do you feel being back in your home state doing comedy? You have some family coming out tonight for our Yeah, show? it's it's, uh, it's it's cool. I mean, these people, I mean, the family that's coming are all my cousins. I mean, these are people I spent all my life with when I was here. And I'm, yeah, it's nice that they're coming to see us. They're like uh, my one cousin, she was, you know, I was close with her when I was younger. And she's, bringing, she's coming with her children and their girlfriend and husband are coming. So they'll be there. And then my other cousin that I spent... When I would come down from the age of five until I was probably like 15, I would stay in his house, in their house. Yeah. So uh, he's coming tonight, too. So that's cool. Awesome. You're going to have a good show. That's going to be a good show. You need, you, I think you need one because you have been having some shit shows. Oh, uh, God. I just hope it's a good. I don't even want to think about it. Mike told me he thought about quitting comedy, and I was like, that's bad shows. <laughs> what do you think about quitting comedy? It was a horrible weekend last weekend, and I'm, I, I don't want to put – I don't want to make – put all the pressure on this show to be that good to make up for those two shit shows right uh but north carolina you have a lot you have a lot riding on this because if i fail again this weekend it's over i don't it's close you're not gonna fail this weekend what happened in the last show well the friday show is in last friday was in the the poconos and uh although 
even the guy who books it knows that the show never feels good. You never feel good on that show. No one does. Yeah. So it's not only me. So going into I know that, but it doesn't make it less not fun. If I'm doing my thing and it's not fun to do. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's in a resort, one of those lover's resorts. So what, my thoughts are... Champagne... The champagne, champagne you know, you know the, the, the hot tub, champagne glass, hot tub, heart-shaped beds in some of the rooms. Those my, champagne glass hot, hot tubs, are they like high? I don't, they don't give you that room when you're a lonely you. comedian. No, that's for, <laughs> that's for VIP that's for, guests. Yeah, 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 you got to pay for I that I always wonder, are they tall? Or are they hey, look, it, uh, there's a photo. It was really you fall from it, I'm saying? Like, yeah, be, absolutely. Break, break your neck. From break it. your neck? Like, yeah. How big's the room where it's got a tall champagne glass? They have like sunken in. They have sunken in living room things in those rooms. Ah. Yeah, so uh, um, so I was there, and uh, my thought is, if if comedy, if stand, if a comedy show isn't your um real point of the night, right? You're not coming to a show or coming out for an evening to see a comedy show. If comedy is just part of a thing, uh-huh. it's never good. Because these people, these people didn't come out to go to a comedy show. They came out to be there for the weekend, to make, you know, to have sex, to go out to dinner, maybe golf the next day, buy romantic shit, play stupid couples games. Comedy isn't really why they're there. So is it like a dinner place that just happens to have comedy, or is the room set up for comedy? No, it's a, it's a, it's set up like an old school like lounge. Like people there, like if they, can they are they like they're like I'm having dinner. Oh, and there's a show, or do they know there's going? Gonna no, they come show? in there for the entertainment. They come into this room for the entertainment. So they know they're going to see comedy. They know they're going to see comedy, but the night isn't for that. They're there. They're just killing time. Right. We're like right. a prop. Let's say, we're like like going and renting a movie. Just to bring a girl back to your apartment. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. oh, what's a movie? I don't know. Who cares? Just touch my penis. Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't give a shit. They're there. It's part of their night. They go to a dinner. They have a big buffet. They go to their dinner. And they got to kill time. So they come there. At like, 9.30, the show starts. And, uh, and they do this comedy thing. And they're drunk. And then they go up and bang. That's all it is. It's really not a night. It's not like when they plan their weekend out. Like, yes, we're going to do a comedy show and then have sex. It's like, we're going to go to the the thing and part of our package, we get a show if we want to go see it. Right, right. This is never fun. The energy in that room is just blah. Some of them are there just to kill time. So set the scene. How many people is it? I would say, okay, the room is, it's, dark and it goes up on an angle so like like if like you stadium seating almost like stadium seating like like little levels like a level and the round tables and chairs and then up another level more round tables or longer tables and then chairs and up just keep going and on the side walls going up are little like half moon uh booths okay up the side so it's dark very dark you can't if you're and it goes up and back, there must have been about maybe there was a, a hundred, hundred and ten people in the room, mm-hmm. but it just goes up into the like, like laughter does not come to you, it just kind of fades away back there. And you're like, so you're below on like a small stage. Yeah, like there's a DJ stage behind you, and they have like this pull out ramp that they pull out to try to go across the dance floor mm-hmm. because the dance floor is between you and where the oh, group so you have starts. A gap, a little gap. Ugh. So, but then they try on these nights, they'll pull the stage out, the platform goes out close to where the people start seating. So you're not that far away. Okay. But to your left is dance floor and to your right of this platform is dance floor and there's people sitting on the left and right. So they're kind of disconnected. Those two, those two tables are not really a part of your show. Right, right. And then it's just, it's it's just like, it's, and you're high above them. So like the, you're like, you're probably... 10 feet off, yeah, about eight feet off the floor is where you start. You're okay. above, you're, so you're up there. You're high above them. Mm-hmm. It's not, there's no connection. Right. You just, yeah. No connection. There's a goddamn DJ booth behind you, and sometimes you're standing there behind the DJ table, so you're like on stage with another human. I'm a comic. I mean, get the fuck off stage. Right, I don't right. need you up here. <laughs> and he always comes up at like, like if you're doing 30 minutes, at like 20, when they light you at 25, there he is back there waiting for the last five minutes so he can play the music. Between for the host to come back up to bring the headliner up. Okay, so then you go. So you're it's just two man show. Three man show. Host, me, and a headliner. So host goes up, does good, or no? the host does good. He does. He's he's like there almost their house host. He's I think he's there almost every week. Um, does good. Does a lot of relationshipy stuff. 
Yeah, whatever. You know, it does canned stuff. Crowd works, hacky shit. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. He, I guess he does a job. Yeah. But it's, even for him, it's not electric in there. Mm-hmm. And I come up, and it's always eh. Like that's pretty much what you're getting. Like yeah, it was there. It was there. But I had friends there a couple times stop by and see me there, and they said that you it was laughter, but you can it wasn't tons of laughter. It wasn't like so overwhelming, but people in the back you could see like one friend was like, This table was dying, everything you said they were dying. But they were so far in the back that I never even know they were in part of the show. Don't you hate that? Yeah. So they were dying, but I didn't know they were even there. So um it, that that show, I walk right out. It, like they have a green room behind the stage. So as soon as I'm done, I'm out. I don't get paid till like the, the, the following week. So I don't need to wait around for a check. It's before that guy can say, "Give it up for Mike Gaffney one more time," I am out the door in my car. So we also oh, like the green rooms behind. It, like, can you hear the show while you're in the green room, like waiting to go on stage? Yeah, uh-huh. I hate that. So I like just jump off, boom, boom, grab out the door, car, start it before he has brought the headliner up. I'm out. <laughs> out. You just. Disgusted, Done. but that, but you knew you were getting that. Thing. That we so know that one didn't buy. You, no. you, you get those gigs where you're like, you know, it's gonna suck. You're doing it anyway, so you Correct. knew. I knew, but it still doesn't make your soul feel better. No. So then the next night, though Saturday night last week, I have a show, and I've had it in my books for about eleven months. It's been on my calendar for eleven months. I have no idea what it is. The name of the place is Tall. Timbers, it's a so I, yeah, exactly. That's the name of the place. Tall, yeah, you know, com- comedy club name. Tall, com- yeah. I'm I'm a comedian. We're playing Tall Timbers. Tall Timbers. We're gonna so cut like, wood and do show. So last summer, I did weekend after weekend of this family resort called Woodlock Pines, and it was a great throwback to like it was like Dirty Dancing. There's families, a bunch of families. You do comedy in one room. It's like a two-man show. And there's a big entertainment room. They put a big musical production on. And it was a comic after that show. And when you say goodnight, the Righteous Brothers come on? Yes. No, yes. I... Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. Nobody puts baby you, in the corner. You kiss to the crowd. Yeah, yeah. The time of uh-huh. life. Oh, when they love it. And that's who's there. Yeah. And and it's young families, too. So, like, it's... And then all day, they got camping stuff and lake stuff and just family it's very family and they get every week and they get the same families book it week the same week every year so like they kind of have the same group there every year right so i couldn't do it this summer like i because i did it every week last summer Mm -hmm. so he put me this put this in and i'm thinking it's something like that so i'm good i like that it was a good group you have to go squeaky clean i used to headline the show 45 minutes squeaky clean i liked it right they always liked me. It was always kind of fun. Sometimes it was great, but most times it was just kind of fun. But I was good with that. That's what I thought I was doing. <clears throat> that kind of group. A week before the gig, I just wanted to see. I googled Tall Timbers. And it's a friggin' campsite. Like a campground campsite. Like tents and shit? Trailers. Campers. They don't have a fun, they don't have cabins. You come and you plug into their electricity, plug into their water line, and they put like four or five trailers butted up together, and it's just a big trailer park. Okay. For the summer. Yeah. You know, so very good place for comedy. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> so I see that. I go here. I want to hit amenities and see what it was offering, and just like for electric this much for I'm like, oh no, it's just plug in campers. Oh great. So they have a show in their shack slash boathouse slash deck thing. It's like just got benches in the – I cannot paint the picture enough of how much this place looks like a, sh- like a, like a boathouse storage shed. Like rafters. You know what I mean? Wooden, it's just a wooden shed thing with wooden that's where the rafters. Show is in a shed. That's where it's at. A little round tables, a couple square tables, just fucking thrown together in a shed. <clears throat> no stage. So you walk in and there's a center of the room which is boxed in by wooden rafters, like kind of like wooden rafter like square like fence around inside this thing where the the fence is actually like a little counter. So people can sit at the fence. <laughs> and then horrible. on the outer part of that is video games, old school video games, and vending machines, right? Okay. And then over here in the right corner is a shuffleboard pushed into it, the area, just to get it out of the way. 
old chairs and some umbrellas and stuff. It's like a storage thing shoved over here. You walk into this little wooden rafter arch, so you're kind of like the fence is around you. You're like kind of half into the fence area and like half still in the back area. No microphone stand, a wireless mic tapped in to the audio of the shed, <laughs> of the camp. Like, attention campers. I can just picture you pissed off on sight and just go, like, fuck this. But like, like, already in your head, you're probably just like, dude, fuck you for not even trying. Like, when you go to a, a venue and you're like, you didn't even try. Didn't even... They didn't even give me nothing. Not even a sign that says comedy. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. So you're pissed off. Tr- pissed off. It's trailer parky people. Right. Coolers, freaking beer, flip flops, and just it's just tank not, tops. Yeah, just and not dirt. not ready for a show. Not like oh, tonight's the show. We're gonna put on a nice no. shirt. And a couple of gonna... older people did, but most of the time, most of the forties and thirties, they were just ugh. The grandmas and grandpas. They you know they did themselves up a little better. Right. They put stead sleeves. Yeah. Yeah. So they're all in there. And there must have been about 80 people, 90 people in this room. But it was like half in a room. And then there was like a big doorway that went out to a deck. Mm-hmm. And there was people out there on the deck. So there's about 80, 90 people spread out. Now, the deck looks over the little beach that goes onto the lake. Onto the pond or whatever the fucking thing is. Right. So that's going on. There's a keg of beer directly outside that bench on top of a picnic table that people have to stand on the picnic table to pump. So that's what you're seeing. Directly in your line of sight, out on the deck, is a dude standing, people standing up on a picnic bench, pumping a keg of beer. While the show's going on. While the show's going on. Don't even have someone serving beer to people. Let me fill this for you. Nope. Each person has to go up and do their own pumping. Do their own pumping. And that's what you're watching back there. Okay. The sound is muffled. The host goes up. And I don't want to talk shit, but I'm going to. All right. You don't have to say his name. I'm not going to. Yeah. Went up and did what he would tell you is amazing crowd work. What I will tell you is the same crowd work he's done a million times. But all crowd work, making fun of the venue, making fun of the people, making fun of the beer, making fun of everything, and they're eating it up. Mm. But he does 20, 18 minutes of that shit up front. Not one joke. Yeah. Just make it for And they're loving him. And I'm sitting, standing outside. I don't know what he's doing, but I know he's killing. Mm-hmm. And I can hear it's crowdy. And he's talking. He said shed, shed a thousand times. And they loved shed. Problem is, I can't say shed now. I can't say we're in a fucking boathouse because you did it for 18 minutes, man. Right. You, yeah. we, I can't even make fun of it now. And I tried right off the bat and they got nothing because he did it all. He wrung it dry. Mm. So he was the man going to make fun of it. And I had to be the man just to do strictly material, which they weren't getting. So he brings me up and I have a major problem how he brings me up. And if he ever listens to this podcast, please reach out to me. He probably won't. Now. <laughs> Here's how he brings me up. Next guy is a good friend I've worked with him a couple of times. He's really funny. You have a treat. I don't know if you guys have been watching a little network called NBC, but he was on that network this year, and he was on Last Comic Standing. Anybody? And people clapped. And like, you saw him? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we saw him. Like, well, you're in a treat. He's here. He was pro- showed prominently on that show on Last Comic Standing, which just goes to show, prove that that show does nothing for your career because here he is in the shack with me, Mike Gaffney. That's how he brings me up. Oh, man, what a dick. So not only did he take my opening joke about myself because, of course, that's what I'm going to say. I have to. Right, right. Away from me. He takes any allure that I could be somebody – and chops my legs out from underneath me. Yeah, if it's okay if you do that. Exactly. But not for him to do it. No. This, and, and it's like, an, he's not even friends with you, or he's like, your friend busting your balls. Right. Like, oh, we're all at this, this shitty gig. We're all going to bomb together tonight. Right. So we could fuck around with each other like that. Right. You know. So he kind of just derails me right off the bat. How I know it's derailed, right before I went up, a frog hopped into the room. 
<laughs> <laughs> a okay. frog, like by the stage, a frog. No, it was stage. When you, by the way, oh, we by, were the, by the floor, by the place where we stood, <laughs> the staging area. Yeah, a frog came in. A frog popped in that doorway because that was right outside, next to the outhouse. A frog jumped in that doorway. <laughs> he did not see it, but people did see it hop in, and it went behind a video game. Uh huh. I said, "Did you see that frog?" He goes, "No." I was like, "Oh, I thought." I thought I was like, oh, I thought I was next, but then I saw the frog, and I'm like, oh, good, it's the frog's next. I'll wait back. <laughs> and you guys were like, yeah, we pay big, big money to see the frog. We pay big money to see that frog every year, and that time he showed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing. It was like I didn't say, like I didn't. They just were just, just silence. Silence. And I'm like, wow. So the woman was like, can't hear you. The one, she's sitting next to the fucking pumping keg in the back deck. So I'm like, maybe if you got here early enough, you could have been inside with us. You're sitting by the, you're on the lake, lady. I can't help you. So I put the microphone to my mouth. Uh-huh. When I put the microphone to my mouth, I hear, Muffled and shit. so I think that that's not good. Right. So I pull it away, but they couldn't hear me. So they can hear me when I do that, but I don't like that sound. So it makes me conscious, so I can't do it. So I guess... From the point I counted on stage till I got off, no one really heard me. Yeah. But the 30 or so people who were in the same area I was, they could hear me, and they didn't give a f- They didn't want nothing I said. I ate my balls for 30 full minutes. Now, this isn't like a comic being too critical. The show just that you really ate balls. <sighs> like, no laughs. Mm. 90 people, 80 people, whatever the fuck was there. Let's just say 12 of them laughed at me. Wow. And it was scattered into minute. La- like this like would laugh a little bit. And then the person over here would laugh at something. And then like Giving your kids stuff that just nothing everywhere. You, all the energy you bring, they were giving you nothing. No, and I was like throwing that out there, all my kids stuff. And like it got nothing. And I was like, wow, man. If, if Prolly gets nothing... Probably got nothing. What? The, the, maybe they got mad. He made fun of the frog or something. I don't like, like, like. So then I I yelled at them. Oh, that always works. <laughs> because they looked like they were judging me for making fun of my kids. Oh, like you were being too mean. So I said, "You guys judging?" And it's like, oh, fucking God. people can't they just fucking know it's a show? It's exaggeration. So I went off on them. They like that. That's the most less I got when I made fun of them. Well, that's okay. The host set up that. They, they're they going to make fun of us, which is always what I say. People don't agree with me. It's like when you establish it's a crowd work show and we're going to make fun of the crowd, everyone's got to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I made fun of I yelled at them. I was like, you guys look at me with your faces. Look at your judgmental mugs. I'm like, I don't even like you to begin with. And to see you people staring at me with these judgmental mugs. Let me just say something to you. You can go home and be fake to your family and be like, yeah, I love my children. I love when they tell stories. Soccer practice is awesome. And I'm going to come up here and tell the fucking truth. Soccer practice sucks. Shut your face and get out of my room. I don't want to talk to you just because you're my kid. Doesn't mean I like you. Get out of here. (laughs) Loving it. I'm like, but you guys are fake. Yay. Woo. Softball. Fuck out of here. And they loved it. And then I was like, oh, you, and I said it right there. I was like, oh, you guys want me to talk to you? Get the fuck out of here. I'm talking to you people. I don't even like you. <laughs> and I'm not doing this. And I did 15 minutes more on my material. And you don't like it? Fuck off. And what happened those last 15 minutes? Exactly what should have happened. Nothing. Nothing. The same that happened in the first 15. <laughs> and I mean, like, there was just one guy sitting. Did so you end just saying thank you? I was like, dude, I'm 30. I'm done. That's my closer. I'm 30. I'm done. <laughs> I've gotten angry. I've told the crowd, I'm like, like I do my last joke, I'm bombing the whole time, and then I go, you guys. Because normally when I do good, I'm like, you guys have been great. Thank you very much. Good night. Right. I'm like, you guys have been the worst crowd ever, and I hope I never see you again <laughs> ever in my life. <laughs> JoeFernandez.net. <laughs> I still get my webpage now. You never know. I said, wow, um, I closed with... I think I was closing on an ass worm. You know what? I did. 
And then I was going to go. It wasn't done. It was 20, 28 minutes. And I went into uh, flying. And I was going to say, I don't like flying. And something happened where I talked to them for a second. Uh-huh. It was like 29 minutes. I'm like, I'm done. I'm not even going to get into this bit. You're not fucking into it. Why am I getting into bits? Yeah, especially a long bit like that. Yeah. Like you've given me no love. I'm going to try and talk to you through this five-minute junk. Yeah, no. You get nothing. So I was just like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. And then, like, I mean, it was like. Oh, like one clapper? It was like nothing. So I was like, I walked right the fuck out the back. I mean, when I tell you there was a doorway, I, I gave him the microphone, walked out of it. Went into my car and I had to wait for Rodney to finish his goddamn hour of horse shit. And because we drove up together, oh, Ronnie Laney together. and I uh, wanted to jump in the lake. I'm like, I can't believe I got. Did you have to see the crowd after? I stayed in my car and not get out of the car. So Rodney comes out. He's like, "Did you get your check?" I'm like, "I did not. Go back in and get my money. I'm not going in there." So wow. he went and got my check, and I just sat in the car. So and yeah. sp- between me and Rodney, the host went back up there and killed, dude. I mean, whistling, howling. The first. 15, 20 minutes he was up there howling, howling like, I mean, I, I've never heard it that loud. In between my and, and Rodney set, howling. Rodney, Rodney, I think is like, I mean, he doesn't give a fuck how he does. I think he just always thinks he's good. <laughs> but I listened to him. Right. I heard him. He got a six max on the scale of one to 10. Okay. He's got, he got a couple of times where they all laughed. I'm like woohoo! But if that was a, he was up there for 55 minutes, he got that twice. The, the host got that 17 times in a five minute set. They just could not stop howling for him. Now he didn't do that bullshit thing a lot of hosts do. Like if you had a hard time, like go up after and start busting on you. No, I walked out and he was. I don't know what he did, but he comes out when he brought Rodney up. He comes out and he says, "Man, now he knows what he did." He's like, "Hush." I don't know, man. I, you got such good material, man. My kids love listening to your material. I don't know what was. He's like, uh, he's like, I, I should have did some material, not just crowd work. Yeah, that's what he said to me. Yeah, it, 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 the, the thing about it is, this guy is a veteran comedian. He's not a new. Like, if you got a new comic that's right. just them saying and he crushes and doesn't know better, right? I mean, you, you give it up, but it's like he knew. Mm-hmm. He know he's been in the business long enough to know if you do that, it's gonna right. fuck up the show. He knows it. He's not mm-hmm. naive. I, I hate that shit. And that's how by him saying, "Man, I should have did more jokes." It shows that he knew. That he knew. He, he knew. It's like this is. Hey, listen, if you want a headline like that, right? Fine, that's your show. Right. I just feel like people like don't understand the point of being an MC. It's like get them ready. You know, like yeah. you know, like I said, you're years in the business. You know. If you turn a crowd into a crowd, we're a crowd. Right. And he did. And they, and then, but the thing that bothered me the most is like, I couldn't do crowd work because he kind of ruined my crowd work by doing, you could not say shack, shed, boathouse. He said it a million times. Yeah. I even said it after he brought him, like, yeah, like he said, M- NBC and now to the boathouse. Nothing. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, I-, I wanted to say what? He can say it? But I can't say it the fuck out of here. And then Rodney did, like I said, a scale of one to ten, he did a six. And I like Rodney. Love you, Rodney. But the things that got the most laugh were the easy facial expression stuff that he does. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, it took me a day of absorbing that. And then I kind of felt good about myself because I'm like, I shouldn't have done well in that room. Yeah. Because they weren't, they wanted what they gave them. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just, you know, that's how it is. It's just not your night, not your room. It's not right. Your people. I mean, I knew it was because that night I was out with my wife and two nights in a row I get texts from you late. Are you up? Yeah. <laughs> and I saw him, I'm driving with Kerry. I'm like, I think Mike's having a bad weekend in comedy because he, if he's having a good time, he'll just call me. Right, right. Just I'll see the day. You up? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Late. Like, I need to talk. Yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> career suicide right Dude, now. I was done. I was like, I, I, on stage, I remember looking. At 14 minutes, someone shouted next in the back. That's so fucking rude. I, I wish you could throw p- the stuff at people. And, say, and I looked over at them. They didn't hear it uh, to, to the host and Rodney. I looked over at them, and I was like, I'm going to be nice because they didn't want a lot of cursing. Uh-huh. And then there was an old man sitting in front of me 
with his back to me, like on a round table. He was directly in front of me, not even three feet away from me, but with his back to me the whole time, just sitting, staring back at the outside. And I'm like, with his back head to me. And he was laughing. Like he was, I could see it was like his head would be moving when he was laughing and stuff. But he wasn't, nobody was dying. But he was you know, laugh, at least chuckling here and there. And I was like, sir, you know you can turn around, right? Like he got, I'm like, what are you just trying to experience what life would be like if you were blind? Is this what you're trying to do? Like if, if I can't get this glaucoma worked out, this is what my life is going to be like. And then he laughed at that. And I was like, turn around. So he turns around. I'm like, yeah, you can see. He's like, I wish I couldn't hear. Oh, and I was like, oh, that's funny. We have a lot in common because I wish I wasn't here. Ugh. And then I went, Did they Ugh. laugh at that when he said that? No, they didn't hear him. Okay. It's just, I, you know, people talk, like, you know, people sometimes say, like, you know, people, you know, for the most part, people are nice and supportive, like in life. Mm-hmm. And I'd say, come follow me to crowds and you see what people are really like. Mm-hmm. Because you would think when you're doing a comedy show, any show, we're a musician, comedian, and it's just not your night, and you're not in a good rhythm. That a crowd would be supportive. Right. If he's struggling. Let's give him a little. Right. Support him. Maybe he'll find. No, they they they're sharks. They find blood in the water, mm-hmm. and they just go for the kill, saying shit yeah. like next. Yeah. Exactly. Like okay, this guy's having a hard time. Let's make him feel worse about right. himself. And whoever said it was a pussy out on the deck. Because I did say, what's up? Well, we got a lot of beer muscles back there. We we'll talk shit. What's up? Nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm listening. You got my attention. What's going on? What do you got? You gonna, you, are you next? And then I looked over. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. What's up? Nothing. I was like, fucking pussies, man. Just yappy, yappy, yappy until I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm not going to have fun with you. If you're mean, I love doing stand-up comedy because I like to watch people laugh. Yeah, and I look at every group audience as people that are fam, like my friends, right? And I want them to laugh. Right. Once I don't like them, it's just like meeting someone. Once I'm not happy about meeting them, I'm like not thrilled with their company. I'm fucking out. I don't care if this guy ever laughs. I don't want to hang with this person. Right. right. And when I'm with a group of people who are not nice, I don't care about you anymore. And like, I don't want you to laugh. So right now, once we do this, establish that you don't, you're not nice to me. Uh, fuck you. I'm not nice to you. I'm not here to try to win you over. I'm not winning people. Fuck am I. Am, I'm a 45-year-old man. I'm going to try to win you over to like me. I ain't never done. I haven't tried to make people like me since I'm 17 years old. I'm certainly not going to start at 40 fucking five because a room full of people in a fucking trailer park aren't feeling me. Oh, my God. Can you guys like me? Get the fuck out of here. I'm not trying to win you over. This is what I do. I say these words. This is the words I say. It's the weirdest thing about what we do. It's like night after night, we got to win a new group of people over. Yeah. In the first 30 seconds to a minute, or else it's like pulling right. teeth. And it's like, I don't know. I, I always feel like I I feel like you have to lose me. Like I give, like when I'm an audience member for mm-hmm. any sort of artistic thing, play, right. music, comedy, I always give you the benefit of the, I don't right. like start in a hole yet. Let me, make me like you. Yeah, yeah, no. I give it to you. Right, right. And then if, you know, after a while, I would never say something. I would just be like, ah, oh, it just didn't have it tonight. Right. I don't know, man. I don't, I and I don't know how they, how, but it made me, it really messed me up because like I was up there. Minute 16, I was like, what can I, I said it to my son, like, what can I right now do differently? Let's take this as a comic. What could I do to make this different? So I'm like, maybe up my energy Okay, I don't want to be fake. Yeah. So what can I do right now to win this, to make this work? What would a, another comic do to make this work? Mm-hmm. Those are the thoughts that were going in my head. And I was like, but this is what I do. I'm supposed to do something different? I don't have anything different. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we all try different things, but they get to the point you're like, they're just never going to like me. Right. They're just never going to... That's usually the nights my family comes out. That's, usually, <laughs> that's what I'm that's, afraid about this weekend. That's usually... My family or like a friend that I haven't, I haven't seen you in 20 years. I'm coming to your show. I can almost guarantee that crowd's going to stink. It's something weird about when people are coming to see me for the first time. Uh-huh. It's, it's like fucking, it's a shitty show. That's why they're like, how come I'm like, I don't invite if you. There's my calendar. Just come. Right. I'm not inviting you. <laughs> kind of why I'm worried about this weekend. Well, this weekend's different because they're, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's a convention. They're always good. When do, it's not like the regular public. We have this. 
I mean, I don't know. When have you ever had a hard time at a convention? No, but there's always a first. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. This could be that weekend. Um, well, at least I'm opening the show, so if it stinks, you're gonna watch that for about a half hour, forty minutes. <laughs> you'll know, you'll know well ahead of time if they're bad. Yeah, right. I I'll, uh, I'll dig a nice hole for you if it stinks. <laughs> no. Yeah, but I like I just think that just because you can put chairs in a room uh, and and it has a sound system doesn't mean it's conducive to comedy. No, not everything is. And like even when we walked up, the the woman running it. Ugh. Just ugh, people. Anyway, Did they show that we're doing tonight. No. Oh. Last Saturday, when I walked up, me and Ronnie walked up to her. And she was like, "Hey, how are you?" She was like, "Yeah, last year they, they didn't like this one guy, and like they didn't like this person." I was like, shut the who? Shut the fuck up, man! Just shut up. Are they already bitching about old yeah. shows? Yeah. They're just. It's because of you, people, man. You guys suck. It's always the crowd's fault. Yeah. It's Carlin always- was right. Carlin was right. Because that's what I said. I said to this, and I'm like, listen, not for nothing. And I don't want to deliver it in an angle. It's like I was checking myself. Like I'm delivering it. I'm smiling. I'm delivering it in a fun way. So I'm not being angry, pissed off. I even tried before the show not to shit on the place. It sucked. But I was like, eh, whatever. It's just, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. I tried to be as positive as I could. And even in the middle of it, I was positive. I was like, you guys aren't fun for me. But I'm probably positive. And I said, you know what, people... This material I'm drawing out is not my. It's not a test drive. I'm not trying to see if it'll work. This shit I do does really well. Proven. I did this shit on TV. Yeah. I like, do it every weekend. Yeah. It's this is pretty good stuff I'm giving you, and you're just not yeah. into it. Then you're not into it. Assworm chuckles. Online dating chuckles. It's just it sucked. It's just like yeah. freaking blue. It's gonna all blow away tonight. We're gonna have a killer show. It's gonna be. Oh, I'm hoping. No, it guaranteed, guaranteed good show. How's that for a jinxing? <laughs> yeah, really. But I did a couple spots in the city this week just to get shake it off. Even it was so bad, bro. The last weekend was so bad. I went out Sunday night and did two free spots. Yeah, just to get like back. That's the best remedy. Yeah, get back on stage. Yeah, and just be like, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I'm like, is- yeah. And I went two free spots and did two free 10-minute spots with brand new shit. Shit that I didn't do the night before. Right. You know what I mean? Just did it. And I was like, yeah. And then I'm like thinking about my stuff. I'm like, ah, maybe my stuff, fuck that stuff, man. Like, I, it's like, you know, Mike, you have material that people want to hear and they like. So you got to give it to them. Mm. So other than comedy, what's going on, man? I haven't had much going on except my new puppy. I'm so into my new puppy, man. I... T- yeah, I'm not even thinking about thing, anything man. else. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a, yeah, it's a cute little... He's cute as hell. It's the first little corgi puppy named Cody. It's the first puppy I've had, brand new puppy, since I'm a kid. Right. Like, even as an adult, I lived with a girl. She already had the dog. Right, right. I liked the dog, but yeah, yeah. it wasn't my it's, dog. Yeah, yeah. Then I, I, I can't wait to get home and shit. Like, right. he's... I'm like, I told my wife, I'm like, I love him so damn much. I don't even really know if I love anybody else. Like, I, I don't feel about anybody like I feel about him. <laughs> he's, he's so cute. Yeah, he is, man. That's a cute dog. He's fucking, he's like, a, he's bad. He bites and shit, but it's like, it's like, it's cute. He's eating yeah, me. Yeah. He's fucking, he's attacking me. How adorable. Do they give you a remedy on that? Like, as in. Well, a- they're, they're a herding dog. So, uh. He's, I guess, like through the years of biology, they're bred to herd. So right. when he nips at your ankles and tries and moves us around, he like he tries to play with you, but it's like kind of hurting you. They say right. he's like nipping your ankles to make you move. Like okay. get over here, get over here. Right, right. And I, I mean, he's ten week, eleven weeks old, so he's a baby. He don't. I think he thinks it's play, but I think he does get. Some of it seems a little pissed off, like. Right. But I think if he, I think like. I don't know how to communicate with him, so he's like, "Fucking go," <laughs> you know, right, like, right, right. like he's like, get, that, "But that's you what I'm saying." What I'm do they at? teach you? Do they? Is there any way to to teach him not to do that? I don't. know. I'm gonna pay somebody to teach oh, okay. me how to teach. I think when you get dog training lessons, it's human training lessons. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I just got to because I want to nip all this shit. I can't be worried if people come over. I don't want him to get to right. a point where he's an adult and just we gotta like it's annoying. Right, we have people coming away. over. Yeah, yeah. Send yeah. them in the backyard. Right, right. So I mean, it's so hard to chew. Like I met one dog trainer and she was young. I'm just like, she don't, I just don't have any faith that she'll right do anything. It was like a pet smart or something. Then you get the other 
end of the sp- and it wasn't bad. It was like two hundred bucks right. for like eight half hour sessions. Right. Then you get the other end of the spectrum. These like dog gurus that are like, "We'll come to your home and 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 it, it's like a hundred and eighty dollars for like a half hour session." Right. Oh, okay. I'm a like, dog whisperer. Yeah, yeah, but you're like, that's a lot of money for like a half hour. How much? Hundred and eighty dollars. Jesus. From to come each time. I'm like. No, I'm not. No. I got to find the middle guy. Yeah, no, I got to find you, you know. It, you know who? No one gives. Do, you no, know, I noticed no, no one gives dog uh, trainers bad reviews. Right. Like they all got good reviews. Like they're all like this guy's the best. Right, right. I've never had one be like this guy came. I spent a thousand dollars and my Justin dog Silver? ate my child. Do you know Justin Silver? No. Oh wait, yes, he's a comic, right? Comedian, but he had that show on Channel Dogs Two. Dogs in the City or something. Yeah. He's a you dog know him trainer. Personally? Yeah. I know him personally, but I I know him. But he's in a city, though. He's not going to come out to Jersey. To I don't train. know. I just, I mean, he might know someone. Yeah, I got somebody who's to do it cheaper. Like a legit. Yeah, I need to find yeah. someone's legit. He might know. But I don't, I mean, I don't know. He's, he's fucking 11 weeks. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, you know? He's right. Taught him, Kerry taught him how to fucking do give paw, which I don't even know why, like, when did that even come? Give paw. Like, when does a dog ever need to give the paw? Like, in a practical sense. Just, I could see lay down. Yeah, yeah. Sit, sit down. But, like, are all dogs like, why am I putting my hand up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, why do I have to bow to you and give you my hand? Like, it's like you're shaking your hand, saying hi. Yeah, I know. This dog. Yeah, he thinks a treat's coming. He's not yeah, trying yeah. to shake your hand. He's not like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, no, He's yeah. like, hey, where's that piece of meat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? I do this thing and they give me food. Sorry. Yeah. Nice meeting you. <laughs> you don't do that with babies. Look, he gives you paw. He gives you. <laughs> I guess we do. We, you always know, see the babies. High five. Say, yeah, high absolutely. Five. <laughs> high five. Uh, say hi. Bye, wave bye. Bye. <laughs> we teach. It's so fucked up. We want them. With like this little six month old baby, we want to wave like a little kid, but the kid's gonna eventually figure out how to fucking wave bye when they're like ten. You know what I mean? Like yeah, when you're ten, you're gonna be like wave bye again. What the hell is wrong with this kid? He's gonna know how to do it. But yeah. He'll figure it out. That's something we gotta get him right now. As soon as he's able to hold his fat head yeah, up, he's gonna go to school first day of school. Look what I learned. <laughs> bye. Yeah, uh, exactly. Oh, everyone was doing it. Yeah. Everyone was doing bye. <laughs> I learned a high five today. How come you guys never told me that shit? I just figured you'd pick it up. I didn't yeah. pick up nothing. <laughs> Everyone was slapping hands. I'm just sitting with my hands to my side all day, first day of school. And I got no friends. I didn't high five one guy. I didn't high five one. I had no idea what they were talking about. Yeah. I don't know why we t- we teach that shit. It's for, it's for us, man. It's not for that kid. You got to do something with it. It's a kid just sitting there. Yeah. Like, hey, baby. Have That's what you do. Says. You train dogs. It's, I guess the babies and the dogs are the same. Like, if we don't start working with him, he's. Th- I want to eat things. Right. He'll start gnawing Now, what things. do you do when he bites at you? Do you say stop? I say stop, then I give him something else to bite. Mm, that's not the, I don't think, the solution. No, it is. I saw it. You got to get, because he wants to nibble on something. Yeah, well, I think a, a point, uh, eventually he's got to get to where he doesn't want to nibble on stuff. Well, that's the tough thing. It's like they say, show your dominance. That's what a lot of books. I have the Dog yeah, yeah. Whisperer book. My mom gave it to me. She had it, the Caesar Milan or whatever his yeah, name yeah. is. You got to show your dominance, make sure, but don't yell at him. But show your dominance. Th- right. Nobody tells you how to. So right. I just stand up. I go, <laughs> like I make like noises at him, and he looks at me like, what the fuck? And he walks away. Right. But I don't know if that's the right thing. I don't know if I'm showing my dominance or that I'm an asshole. Well, like when I was dating this girl, she had a, a little uh, chihuahua mix thing, right? And he loved me, but loved to lick my forearm. Just loved to lick right here, like the forearm. Just loved to lick. Yeah. And I like, I don't mind it, right? It was right. like, oh. Mine licks my toes like an ice cream cone. She was like, stop it. And I'm like, no, it's fine. She's like, no, you have to teach them stop it because to them, to a dog, licking you is their dominance. It's the way they are in control of you. You have to. Yeah, you have to make you in control. You're in control. And I was like, but I don't like it. I don't mind it. So she, when she wasn't around, I would let him do it because it I liked it. <laughs> I liked him licking me with like my face. I liked yeah, it. I was watching the Yankees, dude. He was holding my foot. Like mm-hmm. with his two paws and just like like I gave him a waffle cone at the short. <laughs> just I'm like, fuck it. He seems like he's having a good time. Yeah, She's yeah. like, why you let him do that? It's gross. I'm like, it's yeah. my feet. I don't eat with them. I don't... Yeah. It, it, 
the other dog should be going, dude, what are you doing with his fucking feet? That's what the, not you. You should be fine with it, but he no, should be the, crossed out. Those dogs out. are probably jealous. Like, dude, was he got all day working? Negative. That's probably delicious. They're like going, seriously? You're looking at you, this guy. Hey, this, that dog is retarded. Um, he's licking that guy's feet. And all the adults are like, don't let him do that. But the dog should be like, don't do that. My freaking feet. Like that, dude, the moment he wakes up, he wants to play. Like it's playtime. Right. He can sleep for five seconds. Be exhausted. Five uh-huh. seconds, it's enough rejuvenation for him. <laughs> like literally, I'll be in bed. I have to pee. And he sleeps right by my side. Right. By my side. And he's sleeping. The moment my big toe touches the floor. Taps the carpet. Ears up. Let's go outside. Oh, we're doing stuff? Like, he is ready. It's like, right. I got to sneak. I got to, like, roll off the other side of the bed like I'm a Navy SEAL. Now, when he sleeps, how long does he sleep for if we watch him? I've seen him sleep for, like, half an hour. Yeah. You know? That's he, cute. He does, like, like yeah, like, he'll go, he likes to run. They they need exercise, the corgi. So, we'll go in the backyard. I'll run back and forth. He chases my feet. Sometimes right. a little ball we play. and. Then he'll just come in and sprawl with his legs out. Like, mm-hmm. he can't even operate them no more. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just done. <laughs> or, like, if he's bored, he'll just, all right, nap time. You guys don't want to play with me no more? Yeah. Go sleep on the side of the wall. That's like, when my niece is Pitbull. Like, every two seconds, I look at my niece's Pitbull. Pitbull, he's, like, struggling to stay awake. Every two seconds, I look at him, he's like, holy shit, this is funny. Well, they said dogs sleep, like, 14 hours a day. Yeah. That, this, this one, always sleeping. It sounds like my 20s. Exactly. <laughs> like, sounds like my 40. I was like, oh, just sleeping all day. Up all night, sleep all day. Yeah, that's pretty much me. But, yeah, no, he's cute. Love the dog. That's yeah, really what my, my life has been focused on the past couple of weeks, just getting home to see the doggy. Mine has been on nothing. I'm actually just trying to, yeah. Who I've been doing that? a lot of writing, though. I've been writing a lot. I just haven't been doing much with it. Yeah, I've been, <laughs> I've been writing a lot and trying out new shit every night. I've been trying out big chunks of material. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm just trying to really throw in a new 10, 10 15-minute chunk. Just trying yeah. to write a new 15-minute chunk. Yeah, man. That's awesome. A man. lot of it, I'm going to try it tonight because it's recovery-based material, but I, it's recovery-based material for regular people. I'm trying to get it to the regular crowd. Yeah, that's what I've been trying with my recovery stuff. It's tough. Because yeah, that's a big chunk of my life. Me. I mean, you know, I was a drug. I mean, not many people are talking about being a recovering drug addict on stage. Not many people are talking about it like, like, like I we talk crack, about. man. Yeah. Well, it's weird because, like, I, I, it was told to me by a club owner one time. I mean, I guess it's the headliner. You could get away with it, but it's like, yeah, like, don't like you know, people come out eight o'clock Friday night, get dressed up for your show, having dinner. They don't want to go dark, right? Sometimes you know what I mean. Like, they don't want the darkness. Right. Sometimes. Well, I'm, I'm not a guy like, but like, it seems dark, even if you're doing it in a fun-loving way, right? When you tell people these oh, stories, it seems dark. No, it is dark it's because it's dark. light to me because I lived it and it doesn't affect me. Right, and it's light to recovery crowds because it's like, yeah, oh, this is yeah. funny, but real people, it's like. Oh, I, and I address it. Um, when yeah, I yeah. say I smoke crack, I'm like, you know what? Every time I say it, I forget. I'll look at people's faces and they're looking like they go from engaged to horrified instantly when I start talking about smoking crack. And I forget how. It's not common to smoke angel dust in class. It's not common. Yeah. And I say it in a, such a cavalier way. Like, so I smoked angel dust in, 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 like, in, in gym once, right? And then, like, they look at me like, you smoked angel dust? He's freaking talking to us about it. Like, I remember being on dates with girls where you think, like, back when you are smoking angel dust, uh-huh. when you're back at drugs and you're just like, you know, like when you're on dust. Yeah, yeah. And you're, no, what? <laughs> what? What's dust? Yeah, exactly. Angel dust. Angel dust, I saw it on TV. That's not good. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that what people are on when the cops are beating them up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but no. I live in a white neighborhood. They don't do that to us. <laughs> we're, they just, we're, no, they don't bother us. Yeah, man. Uh, so I've been, I've been saying it, but I've been trying, like, I'm, I'm not trying to be dark and deep about it. I'm, tr- I'm trying to be funny about it. I'm trying to be ironic about how being a, a, a parent, 21 years removed from smoking crack, but, as a recovering addict alcoholic, it's always there somewhere. Right. And it is very deep in my brain somewhere. It doesn't come out often, but it's just, I want to figure out a way to talk about how it's always looming there. Right. And like when I, everything I talk to my kids, it's even maybe the reason why I'm having a hard time to get it to work because it's really not a hundred percent true. 
Yeah. Because when I talk to my kids, I don't always say, don't smoke crack. I'm never like that. Because mm-hmm. I truly feel that just because I was a degenerate, maybe I got to start talking about it truthfully. Because just because I was a degenerate doesn't mean you get to be a degenerate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just because I was a fuck up doesn't mean it was okay. Because I would tell, like, I remember I would tell my, my kids, like, dude, you got to really focus in history class. What's wrong with you? And my mom was like, you failed history. I'm like, shut your face. Of course, I smoked crack. Are we... Are we Green flagging that, green lighting, crack smoking because I did it. Yeah, I sucked at history. Doesn't mean you get to suck at history. You know what I mean? Like, nah, yeah, no, we're both going the same. It'd be funny, like, cause I want to get rid of my, um, I want to record my addiction stuff, just to move on from it, just to, to like, right, stamp it, move on. That was part of my life. I yeah, did yeah. Com- and it was really what started my comedy career. Right, I was talking about that. I just want to. I'm kind of sick of the material, so I want to do it. So you did. A lot more. My act was based on recovery for most of my comedy yeah, career. I never talked about recovery. So I'm going to record that, dump it. That'll be my first CD. If you do like something similar, then maybe we'll just we'll both have our singular CDs. Then we'll combine them into a stand-up anonymous double CD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To sell yeah, yeah. It, like these shows. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, that's what I want to <coughs> do. That's my that's my my project. Get the CD out. See, I talk to people like a Jim Brewer. I remember Todd Lynn. Todd Lynn was blind. Right before he died, he was blind. And he was sitting in the, at the comedy the, at Ha. And I said, uh, I said, I was telling someone, I was like, bro, when I got out of detox, and Todd Lynn's like, hold up. Mike Gaffney, did you just say when I got out of detox? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, motherfucker, why are you not talking about that shit on stage? Yeah. And I never did. And it wasn't because I made a conscious decision not to. It just I talked about what was relevant at the time. And I'm not in detox. I have 21 years clean. Right. Drugs and addiction aren't part of my lifestyle. So right. that's why I don't talk about it because it's something. But I think if I can tap into what I used to be and what I am now, what I used to be and what I am now, and kind of do that, because I never talked about being an addict on stage, only in recovery shows. I've never talked about it in the real show. Yeah. Ever. No, yeah. No, that's my whole thing. My drug past, my current addiction with food, right, and the whole mental illness that goes along with both. It's right, still, right. still the same. Like, I, yeah, I don't do that no more. But I'm trying this. not to do this anymore. But right. my mental state is still just as fucked up. As, right, I'm still the mental case. I'm right. just not using. I just do it with different substances. Right, right. That's like my whole. People have been telling me that since I started. It's like I like when people make me insecure. The club owner is like, "Oh, you shouldn't do that. It's kind of too dark." Da, da, yeah, da, yeah. Da. People would say, like, "Don't listen to them. That's your niche. That's your. That's, that's you. That's your yeah. truth. That's, that's yeah, what yeah, separates exactly. you. That's what you know." Right. And like that, me. That isn't my thing. So like when people tell me I to talk about it, it's like I'm trying to identify what Mike Gaffney and that guy are like today. Can we match those up? Can I pull from the guy from I was 22, 23, 24 years old drug addict? Because I'm not that guy. No. So it's hard for me to talk about it like that guy. So I'm trying to find a way to do talk about it because I think for I can make it funny. And I think if I can shed some light on drug addiction in a funny way, right? it'd be pretty good. Sure. You know what I mean? And if and I can intertwine it with me being a dad today, talking about how I was then and now I'm a dad and how I used to think about dads when I was 22 years old and how I never thought I was going to be a man, but now I am a man, but I'm not the man I thought that was a man. Like, these are all things I want to try to convey. Yeah, that's good. You know? Man. It's always fun when you're trying to figure shit out to make what we do yes. fun. It's like now I'm trying to, you know, just move things around like a puzzle. Right. I'm trying to figure out how to make it work. It's like... Right. And I had told, uh, what's his name? Uh, fucking the Bill Burr's opener. Why can't I think of his name right now? Paul Verzi. Paul Verzi. And I was telling him about, you know, my past. And I was like, what I thought a man was. And like, and like, I'm like telling my kids, you know, when, like, you know, back in the, you know, like when you have a parents, your dad's like, you know, don't do this and don't do that. And you're like, you know, when you were a kid, you're like, what do you know, dad? And your kid's like, what do I know? I was a nom. And like, he tells you these stories. And he's like, what do I know? What do I mean? Let me tell you what I know. I used to smoke crack every day, like, like, and I told Paul that, and Paul can stop laughing. He's like, that's just a funny thought, like you <laughs> jumping up, going, "I'll tell you what I know." I'll tell you. He goes, "That alone, right there, I already know that you are a crackhead. I want to hear what's coming out of your mouth." Yeah, he was like, "Let me tell that you, was you what your nom, huh? That was yeah. your nom." Yeah, exactly. So that, and then I used to think, what like a man was. A man was like a guy with like a briefcase or a bag or some satchel. There was a tie, always at home at five, tie loose. 
waiting for dinner. You know what I mean? Like that was what a man did. Paid a mortgage, shaved a lot. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. like a man. That's what my vision of a man was. And I'm not that guy. <laughs> so like, am I not a man? Like I don't even know. And I think maybe I'm really not a man. So like I think that's what I want. That's my own truth. I want to evolve and say where I'm at and where I came from and who I am. Yeah. People like that shit. Yeah. That's good, man. Ooh, fucking episode two is almost done, bro. 55 nice. minutes in. episode two. I think two. that's pretty good right there. Yeah, man. I think people are going to like it. You know, if you do like it, share it. Uh, because everybody asks, hey, man, we really love you. How can we help you? And, like, you know, people come on my Facebook and they're like, when are you going to be in Tennessee? When are you going to be in Atlanta? When are you coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma? And, like, believe me, every place on the map I would love to go perform. Right. However, if there's only one person in Tulsa asking for me to come, they're not going to put you on his Nobody's sticks. coming. No. You know what I'm saying? So if you want me in Tulsa, make some noise. Get your friends interested. Show them my videos. Show them these these podcasts. Get them on board. Then maybe 50 people in Tulsa go, dude, when are you coming? Now we can make some moves. Yeah. So if you want me in, you know, want me in, 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 in fucking Tucson, Arizona, just share me with your friends. Share this podcast with your friends. And that's how you can help us because the more listeners we get, the higher up we go on the rankings. Yeah, you got to go on. If you listen on iTunes or Stitcher, you got to go and rate the show. They always give like these stars where you can choose to rate it. Give us like five stars. If, hey, if you think we're four stars, give us four stars. But yeah. just rate us. Right. And if you leave a comment, that shit helps us move up in the rankings. The more comments and ratings we have, the better the ratings for the show. The more people hear it, the easier it is to get Mike to Tulsa, and then yeah. I'll open for him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, yeah, man, I appreciate the people that are listening. Thanks. I, we got you know some emails, um, got some good downloads the first week with relatively no promotion. And uh, so episode two is in the books, weekly podcast. I, you know, this one will be out Monday. Hopefully, I'll probably just doing them on Mondays. I think that'd be the best way. Yeah, man. You know, record them sometime during the week. But people need to hear us talk talk this right now. We're trying to end the show. I'm trying to. <laughs> what happened? I don't, I don't need to tell people what we're thinking about doing. We no, can just true. talk that off sure. the show. But yeah, see, because this, this is the problem I have: ending a show. Never know how. Huh? Well, here's how we do it. Thank <laughs> you guys just, so much for listening to. What's the name of the show again, Mike? It, you, I, I'm, I know the now name of the what? show. Okay, Mike got it. Mike came up with the show. Thanks for listening to Now What. You should follow us on uh, Joe. What is it? Joe Fernandez seventy five. That's my Twitter. Joe yeah, Fernandez Twitter. seventy five. Fernandez with an S. Joe Fernandez dot net or Facebook dot com slash Joe Fernandez and Mike Gaffney Live dot com and it's Mike Gaffney now on Twitter. Mike Gaffney now on Instagram. Uh, but if you go to Mike Gaffney Live, all the links are there. Yeah, man, go on Facebook, Twitter. Tell, tell you say how awesome the show is. People say, "Hey, yeah." Tom from Oklahoma or wherever says the show's awesome. Correct. I want to. I'm going to check it out. That's how this shit works. That's it. Got to, got to help us sell it. And if you don't think it's not awesome, then you know I'm not asking you to. You know. <laughs> we're not asking you to lie. But if you do like, if you want to support us, that's how you support us. Yeah. Just by letting people know that we're out there, and then they'll listen. And if they like us, they'll support us as well. Nobody's that good of a liar. They're like, I hate this show, but I'm going to tell people it's good. Exactly. That's how much I'm a liar. That's how I much I'm a yeah. lie. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate these people, but just so I keep lying. Well, they might not be a big fan of the show. They might be like, yeah, it's all right. You know, it's, it, 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 it passed the time. And you know what? Go fuck yourselves if you don't think it's episode two. It's two. It's exactly. Such judgmental. Exactly. Like an asshole. What do you expect? Yeah, turn it off right now. Turn it's it off. Free, turn it off then. It's a free fucking show. Go ahead. Did yeah. you turn it off? Yeah. Are you still listening? You're waiting for genius. You can't even turn it off, right? Yeah. How do you know? It's shit. Episode 17 may be great. Yeah. And you're judging us so early? Exactly. Fuck you. I don't even know who you are. But, you know, <laughs> fuck you and your attitude. You know, I don't need your comments. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. Fuck don't you. don't you know, touch this. Don't even look at the stars right now. Just move it on. You know what? You should, uh, The fact that you're listening now is pissing me off. Yeah. You should have shut it off by now. If you're, we're 59 minutes into this podcast, fuck you. Yeah, we look for the genius now. You yes. really? Well, you know what? I'm going to say for Joe, I'm sorry about the fuck you, because if you held out for 59 minutes, you had a lot of hope, which is nice. You had a lot of hope, but if you're judging in 59 minutes yeah. now, then, yeah, then we're judging you for your stupid hope. Yeah. And uh, so, all right, people, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.